don't fly China Eastern. That might sound a bit harsh, but hear me out. I recently spent 20 hours on two different China Eastern planes in economy. Both flights were pretty underwhelming to say the least. From a disappointing and outdated hard product to shocking meal services and an inefficient Shanghai transit experience, China Eastern did not present itself in a good light. But let's start at the beginning. The journey commences in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. Good evening guys, you join me in a hotel room in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam and it is time for another aviation adventure. I am flying back to Europe today but I am taking a long route and I'm gonna spend almost 20 hours on an airline called China Eastern and I have never flown on them before. The reviews online are quite mixed and yeah I guess we'll find out together if China Eastern are any good. Before we head to the airport, let me explain today's route. The first leg of the journey is a 5-hour red-eye flight from Saigon to Shanghai. I will then spend 5 hours in transit before taking a very long 13-hour flight all the way to Rome, Italy. Why? While editing this, I am asking myself the same question. Anyways, let's start the adventure at Tan Son Nut International Airport. The first problem with China Eastern was its annoying website. It kept breaking down and didn't let me choose my seats for some reason. As I was queuing for check-in, I found out that several other passengers had the same problem. Anyways, the check-in agents were friendly and gave me a window seat for the second flight. For the first leg, I had to go with a randomly assigned aisle seat. Nothing they could do about that. Security and passport control took no more than 15 minutes, giving me time to explore the gate area. Tan Son Nut is the busiest airport in Vietnam and has quite a colorful history. The first airport was built on this site by the French in the 1930s. During the Vietnam War, the airport served as a US military base. After the war, it became a civilian airport once again and saw several major expansions, the last one in 2007. Having flown out of here three times in the last two years, I can say that the organization is not great. Every single time my plane was delayed and today will be no different. On a positive note, the concourse is quite airy and nothing feels overcrowded. The best thing about SGN Airport, however, is landing here. If you approach the airport from the west or south, you'll fly over the stunning Mekong Delta. Alright guys, time to head to the gate. Boarding is in about half an hour and yeah, departure time is 2.35 a.m. What a terrible time to fly. But yeah, we got a red-eye flight to Shanghai and we should get there at around 7.30 a.m. After that, we have a five-hour layover before continuing the journey all the way to Roma in Italy. And that will be a 13-hour flight. So yeah, I really hope that China Eastern will be okay. Otherwise, this will be a very exhausting trip. Looks like we're gonna be delayed. The flight is supposed to leave in 15 minutes, but we haven't started boarding yet. We ended up boarding at 2.45 a.m., 10 minutes after the scheduled departure time. Thank you. Please, sky priority. As we are entering this 15-year-old Airbus A330-300, let me clarify something here. This is an unfiltered review without any bias, but there are expectations. China Eastern is one of the big three in China and a member of the SkyTeam Alliance. It markets itself as a full-service carrier and not a low-cost airline. As such, you have the right to expect certain standards. So, does it fulfill them? The short answer is no. The cabin on this A330 could undoubtedly use an update, but the retro design is the least of my issues. My main problem with this product is the following. This is not a one hour low cost flight, but China Eastern treats it as such. It is well past 3 am and there are no pillows, blankets or proper headrests. Entertainment screens, plugs and Wi-Fi are all non-existent. 
Again, it's all about market standards. If this was Air Asia or Vietjet, it would be okay, because a ticket would cost around $100. However, for a SkyTeam member that charges SkyTeam prices, this is not acceptable. On a positive note, the legroom is great and the seat reclines quite a bit. I also have to mention that the crew were polite and professional throughout the entire flight. This flight is bound for Shanghai Now we are ready for departure. Hope you enjoy your flight. Thank you. We ended up departing at 3.30 a.m., about one hour behind schedule. Half an hour later, the crew handed out, um, breakfast? There were two unidentifiable cakes that were absolutely inedible. They served these with milk for some reason. I also got some coffee which they provided upon request. I still don't know what this was, but it tasted like plastic. The crunchy chocolate bar, on the other hand, was okay. Anyways, the rest of the flight was pretty uneventful. The loo was okay and they kept playing Chinese commercials on the overhead screens. Unsurprisingly, I didn't get any sleep. We arrived in Shanghai about one hour late and I was in for a long and exhausting security check. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Shanghai Pudong International Airport. Thank you. Watch your feet. Take care of the elderly and children transiting through Shanghai Pudong Airport. How can I put this? Well, it's not great. So the whole process of getting my documents checked and then the security check took about one hour. But an even bigger problem that we are facing here is that the Wi-Fi is not working. So I tried with my international phone number and I also tried with the kiosks that they have here and none of them are working. So basically I have a layover of about three hours now and I have no Wi-Fi. That is really unsatisfactory. I spent more than three hours at this airport and didn't manage to connect to the Wi-Fi. Even though I scanned my passport and filled out one page of information on the Wi-Fi kiosk. And yes, I know about the Great Firewall of China, but that wasn't the problem. The Wi-Fi was simply not working. Worse still, most places were closed at Pudong Airport, even Starbucks. There were only two places to get food in this massive international terminal. This is one of the busiest airports in the world's largest country. I am as baffled as you are. I know that China only recently reopened and I guess that's why most places are still closed. But come on, you have such a beautiful terminal and you can't open a few more restaurants. I know this isn't the fault of China Eastern, but Pudong being one of their main hubs, you're likely to transit here, making the airport part of the experience. Anyways, it was soon time for boarding and we got another Airbus A330. Luckily, the second plane didn't come from the Stone Age. Just like on the first plane, the cabin was in a 242 configuration, but it was a lot more modern. And this time there were blankets, pillows, universal power sockets and personal entertainment screens. The legroom was also fantastic. My seat on this flight is 63 Alpha. Luckily the check-in agents in Saigon had managed to get me a window seat in an empty row. Great service there. So if this is China Eastern's A330 cabin, why hasn't the first plane received an update? Your guess is as good as mine. Anyways, the hard product was okay this time, but let's not celebrate too early. This flight did have a lot of problems as well and we'll get to those later. First, let's watch the safety video and get going. The flight left around half an hour late, but that didn't change the arrival time, as the pilot had a full 13 hours to catch up. We were soon at cruising altitude and the crew handed out headphones. They weren't great, but on par with other airlines. So let's have a look at the entertainment system. China Eastern offers about 15 Western movies as well as some TV shows. There are naturally more Chinese movies on offer. The in-flight maps were pretty cool, but the games didn't work. Overall, a very average entertainment system. 
And surprise, surprise, it broke down five times during the flight. Every few hours, the system simply crashed for 10 to 20 minutes before magically reappearing. Not ideal when you are in the middle of a movie. One hour into the flight, the first meal came. And I am not gonna beat around the bush here, it was terrible. I went for the Chinese pork option and it was completely flavorless. The vegetables were still half frozen and the meat tasted like it had been lying around for days. And then there was this soup, which smelled and tasted like sick. I am not joking here. This was one of the worst airline meals I've ever had. But it wasn't even the worst meal on this flight. Just wait until you see breakfast. The only good thing was a bread roll with butter. Alright guys, we have been in the air for about two hours now. And yeah, I am struggling to find positive things to say about China Eastern. Of course, this cabin is much newer and much better than the one that we had on the first flight. This is the newer A330 that China Eastern uses. But yeah, the hard product is average at best. The seats are okay, a bit dated, but quite comfortable. The leg room is actually pretty good and the entertainment system is average and it keeps breaking down all the time it hasn't been working for the past 20 minutes the food was absolutely terrible no other words for it so yeah 10 more hours to go now i don't want to be all negative and just highlight the airline's problems so here's something positive the cabin crew they were sensational proactive friendly and fast as an example they kept bringing more coffee without me having to ask the crew on this flight gets a 10 out of 10. It's a shame really that they have to deal with such a mediocre product. It was then time to catch up on some well-deserved sleep. About 8 hours into the flight, the second meal service came. At this point, my body clock was completely broken. As such, I didn't care if it was dinner or breakfast. What I did care about was the state of that meal. It was literally inedible. The meat was swimming in grease and the rice was stickier than liquid glue. The only thing that I managed to eat was the fruit salad, which was okay. This was the worst airline meal I've ever had. And there are no excuses for such a lack of quality. Anyways, let's forget about that meal and continue the journey. As the flight wasn't completely full, I managed to catch up on some more sleep. As the entertainment system was working, I watched 1917, a fantastic movie by Sam Mendes. It was then time to check out the loo, which was clean but didn't feature any amenities. We were flying over St. Petersburg at this point, which is quite an anomaly these days, as Western airlines are banned from Russian airspace and vice versa. That obviously doesn't apply to Chinese airlines. Two hours later, the skies over Italy were clear and we got some amazing views out of the window. We arrived on time at around 8 p.m. Welcome to Aeroporto Leonardo da Vinci in Fiumicino, Rome. In the background, you can see an Air China plane, one of the other big three airlines in China. I might review that airline as well in the future and see if they are better than China Eastern. Anyways, Leonardo da Vinci Airport has been modernized quite significantly in recent years and the arrival process is now super efficient. If you are an EU citizen, passport control takes no time at all thanks to the automatic gates. It is also now time to reveal the ticket price. I paid exactly 400 USD for the entire journey. That might sound like a good deal, but it's actually quite similar to the competition. So why did I book this weird route in the first place? Well, I wanted to see whether China Eastern might be underrated, as they don't get a lot of praise online. Underrated, they are not. They offer a substandard product and are miles behind many other Asian, European and Middle Eastern carriers. To conclude, I am going to give China Eastern a 3 out of 10. 2 points for the fantastic crew and 1 point for the price, which is competitive but not great value. 
The product was underwhelming at best and the food was shocking. With nothing more to say, I would like to thank you all for watching and see you again next week. Goodbye.